Now, James Sung joins me now. He's the chief strategist of Zocus Strategic Marketing, a Chinese-American firm. Thanks very much for your time, James. Now, tell us more about this tech academy and how China is hoping to foster its homegrown talent. Well, definitely uh, China is making a big, great big push for tech, as it always has. Um, but uh, what, uh, what they're adding in the mix this time is they're encouraging entrepreneurship as well. So basically, um, InnoX is more about uh, encouraging students to think not just in terms of science, not, in just, uh, not just in terms of tech, but also in terms of how can they innovate, how can they uh, be an entrepreneur, and uh, that's becoming the new education. What makes the Greater Bay Area so important for China in this next step? How does China hope to transform the region? Are they looking at trying to create their own Silicon Valley, for example? And how does the mainland play into that? Well, I think uh, the Greater Bay Area has, uh, has already overtaken uh, Silicon Valley uh, in California in a lot of different ways. And uh, actually, President uh, Xi just uh, gave a speech a few days ago and he kind of outlined a 10-year plan for uh, research and development. And uh, very surprising to me uh, was he said, don't be afraid to fail. Um, this, is, uh, this is something that, you know, growing up with Chinese parents, uh, we don't hear a lot. But, uh, you know, the, the Chinese mentality uh, right now is uh, very much in tune with innovation. And uh, she was uh, outlined how he was going to reorganize science parks and uh, support international uh, technology cooperation between different nations and the greater bay area is definitely a big part of that so how important then do you think is tech for china's economic future and does that involve bringing in outside talent and international companies to help it achieve its goals well, uh, it's it's uh, it's very interesting that we see uh, you know U.S. tech companies now laying off so many people. Uh, we see Twitter, Tesla, you know they laid off like uh, 10 to 20 percent of uh, R&D staff, and uh, that's very telling. And at the same time, now China is doing massive hiring. In fact, uh, part of uh, the COVID controls that are being relaxed now are exactly for this purpose to open the borders up more for talented individuals to join. Uh, you know, a few years ago, China launched uh, the Peacock Plan, which was to uh, encourage uh, high-level talents. And uh, now we see that, um, you know, along with financial subsidies uh, internally within China, they're also uh, talking about uh, how, how can we encourage uh, people to innovate more and work on research more, work on technology more, and worry less about titles, worry less about uh, the cost of living. Uh, you know, so this is, uh, you know, what we see now is China has a lot of these uh, STEM degrees uh, versus uh, U.S. Uh, with their, uh, you know, liberal arts degrees. Uh, so uh, China is definitely... <laughs> so you've got a little uh, guest there. Uh, yes, <laughs> well, she didn't get the memo. This is this is easy. <laughs> okay. That's brilliant. Well, look, look, one, look, one last question, if we can. If it gets too disruptive, we can we can finish the interview. Do you need to go? Uh, no, no, no. I'm okay, here. I'm here. great. We can, we can be interviewed together. Oh, beautiful. One, one last question then. China has proposed that by 2035, the country wants to be fully self-sufficient in the semiconductor market. What does the country need to do to achieve this, do you think? Well, uh, China needs cooperation from uh, the international partners. Uh, right now, uh, the semiconductor industry is in china it's it's maturing uh it's not mature yet but it's maturing it needs the help of a lot of uh the european partners uh, it needs the help of japan it needs the help of uh, south korea it needs the help of netherlands and what we saw with uh with the 5g uh is uh, you know the u.s is blocking uh ericsson from uh, sharing any technology but now uh what we really want is asml to help uh, to help with uh, sharing some of this technology. And I think it's only fair. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you like a, like a silly analogy. I mean, right now, China and, uh, China and the U.S., they're in the Olympics. They're, they're racing uh, 
Uh, but the U.S. is not allowing them to wear Nike shoes because uh, they feel that's that's uh, you know that's anti-competitive. It's uh, it's it's, mm. it's 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 very silly. It's a very silly issue right now. Right. That's, uh, because eventually they're both going to cross the finish line, and eventually, uh, you know, even ASML uh, needs uh, supplies from Asia as well. It needs supplies from China. In fact, they have over 5,000 suppliers. So it's you can't block this. You can't block innovation. Okay. All right. That was James Sung, and it looks like his little daughter as well, who's scurried off. Thank you very much for your time, James. <laughs>